Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining this morning. Uh, my name is Tasha Harder. I am a resource soil scientist with NRCS Idaho. Um, I'm going to be presenting to you today on Idaho soil series and some really neat resources that are available to all of you. And several of these were created by the soils GIS team here at NRCS Idaho. So uh, some of these resources might already be somewhat familiar to you, but some of these are also um, very new. So it's kind of exciting to share with you. Um, so I'm going to present for about half an hour, and then there'll be plenty of time for some questions at the end. Um, so I'm going to kick this off with just a few PowerPoint slides. Um, let me know when you can see it in presentation mode, please. To see it in presenter mode. And presentation mode. Awesome. OK, so this presentation is going to build a little bit off of the last lunch and learn. Um, that featured the nitrate leaching potential interpretation um, and how to generate that interpretation in Web Soil Survey. So as we all know, that Web Soil Survey is the official source for the most current and detailed soils information available to the public. Um, just in case some of you are, are curious about Web Soil Survey and don't have a lot of experience with it so far, I can paste a link in the chat to um, a talk I gave about a year ago on Web Soil Survey specifically. So you can go back and watch that later. Um, the nitrate leaching potential lunch and learn recording uh, from two weeks ago has already been posted there as well. That's on the Idaho NRCS YouTube account. Um, but this presentation today will take place outside of Web Soil Survey. Uh, to explore more about soil series on kind of a generalized statewide scale. So my goal is that after this lunch and learn, you'll have a better understanding of what a soil series is. You'll walk away with some resources that you can reference later um, and understand that there are more ways to get familiar with soil series in your working region so that you don't get overwhelmed using Web Soil Survey as a starting place to get acquainted with your local soils. Um, so we're going to take a look at the things listed here. Official series descriptions, story map web pages that were created by the team, and introduce also series extent, type locations, and lab characterization data for soil series. So I'm going to share links to web resources as I go, and I recommend opening the links and looking around or just bookmarking them for later use. So this Launch and Learn is going to focus largely on soil series. In brief, a soil series can be thought of like the common name of a soil. There are the names that you see in the various map units of soil maps that you create in Web Soil Survey. They're like the basic units used to classify and identify different soils. So for example, um, you can see here a screen capture of um, a soil map from Web Soil Survey. Um, and this map unit over here um, contains one major soil series, that pan carry, whereas this map unit up here contains two major soil series, the Palactis and Tenno. So map units are named for the dominant soil series found within them. Um, some things to know about soil series include that everyone is distinct from others and one or more of its properties and that a soil series is one category within the national system of soil classification. It's actually the most specific level of classifying a soil. I'm going to spend a couple minutes talking about soil taxonomy just to give some more context about this classification system. Um, so this system categorizes soils based on their observed and their measured properties. And it goes from very general to very specific categories. The highest, most generalized level of classification is the soil order level. Um, and anyone who's taken an intro soils course at a university will probably be familiar with these. 
So there are only 12 different soil orders, and we see them displayed on the screen. So if you think about it, all of the thousands of extremely diverse soils we encounter across the country are organized and placed into just one of these 12 boxes. So these are very large generalized groupings. Um, some of them that you might be familiar with, you know, we have our mollusols here, typically our grassland soils. They have that thick, dark surface. It's really rich in organic matter compared to the aridosol order. Um, these are found in water limited environments, such as the Snake River Plain. They tend to have a very little organic matter and more carbonates and salts. And then entosols might be familiar. Those are the really young kind of baby soils with very little development. Um, but here's a question for the audience. I want you to guess how many of the 12 soil orders are found within the state of Idaho. So if you'd like, go ahead and throw a number in the chat box. Any guesses? I see a three. Anyone else? Nine? Two? Ten. Awesome. So Carla is the first person to get it correct. Um, ten out of twelve orders. So the only two not found in Idaho are oxisols. The most highly weathered soils. They're found near the tropics and they're not, they're not found in the continental United States, as well as gelosols or permafrost soils. So 10 out of 12 orders in one state indicates huge diversity in things like our climates and geology. And in my opinion, it makes looking at the soils really fun. So this triangle kind of further breaks down the hierarchy of the national system used for soil classification. From the 12 soil orders uh, at the top in red, down to that most specific grouping, the soil series uh, in purple there at the bottom. So each soil is initially organized into one of 12 soil orders. For example, um, say a soil is, is categorized as an aridosol, then within that order, there are seven suborder groups based on even more specific properties about that aridosol. Um, for example, it could be a gypsid suborder if the aridosol has an abundance of gypsum, or a calcid suborder if there's an abundance of calcium carbonate in that aridosol soil. And it continues down the hierarchy like this. Each category is progressively more specific, um, and then you reach the series level. And there are over 20,000 different soil series found throughout the United States. So say, for example, you're looking at um, the soil series Portneuf. Um, then the, the family level of classification down to dark blue, also called the taxonomic classification for the series. Um, it's a really long string of words. Coarse, silty, mixed, superactive, mesic, duranotic, xeric, haplocalcids. So I color coded the different parts of the taxonomy that correspond to different parts of the, the hierarchy here. Um, so this is an example of an aridosol. The ids ending here is for aridosol um, that was placed in the calcid suborder and then the haplocalcids great group uh, it, and so on. So this gives a lot of information about you know, the general characteristics um, uh, of the question of the soil in question, but it's also really difficult to use when you're talking about soil, uh, a soil outside of um, like a soil mapping context or a soil science context. It's much easier to talk about the soil using the series name, and that's why I like to think of it as a common name, similar to using the common versus scientific name of a plant or an animal. So the series is the most specific level of classifying a soil. And that series name is actually more specific than that string of words at the um, family level designation. So every series then has a really unique combination of properties that distinguishes it from other series that might be in that same family. Um, so the last thing I wanna emphasize here 
about soil series is that it's just an easy way to know and communicate about soils. And with time, you can familiarize yourself with the basic properties or kind of like the identity of a series. So an official series description or an OSD as they're really commonly called, um, it's the document that describes a specific soil series in great detail. In general, they look like um, the photo to the right, but um, I don't expect anyone to be able to actually read that. Um, it includes a lot of useful sections though, like detailed horizon information um, and others that I'm gonna show you uh, in just a second. So I'm gonna end this PowerPoint and jump over to a web browser. Okay, so to access OSDs, you can just Google NRCS OSD and click that first link that pops up. And then I like to click view OSD by series name. But I'll also just drop this link in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to look up the OSD for Portneuf as an example. Uh, when I hit submit, the document just opens automatically. Okay, so here's our Portneuf OSD. Stands for Official Series Description. At the top, you can see that familiar taxonomic class again. And then below that, detailed information going horizon by horizon um, that describes the central concept of this soil series. It gives depths of horizons, um, textures, colors, etc. Um, also importantly down here is the range and characteristics. So this gives the ranges and values a soil can have for different properties and still be considered a portent soil. So um, a good example is looking at the depth to a calcic horizon. A, a calcic horizon is a diagnostic soil horizon that has really high content of calcium carbonates. So if the depth to this calcic horizon is six inches, or if it's 15 inches, as it's written here, um, it still fits in the description for a Portneuf soil. Uh, jumping back up just a bit to this type location, I'm gonna talk about this in more detail later, but a type location is a specific spot that if I dig a hole, um, in this case, um, 1,500 feet north, oh wait, yeah, 1,500 feet north and 50 feet west of the southeast corner of this section, the soil I see should very closely resemble the soil horizonation as it's described here. Um, this EK right here is the notation for the, um, denotes the calcic horizon. So on the OSD, it starts at nine inches um, and that's what we'd expect also at the type location it's central to the concept described here in other places farther away from this type location the portent of soil might gravitate towards um, the ends of the ranging characteristics so you might see that calcic horizon start deeper in the soil profile maybe down to 15 inches um, and lastly, these sections at the bottom are super helpful for understanding how a soil series is different from other ones. Um, I really like to look at the competing series listed here. So these, a competing series means that these series have the same family level taxonomy, but this is telling you how they are different as a soil series. And in this case, it's related to soil texture. Um, similarly, you can look at geographically associated soils. This compares um, like the Portneuf series to others that are mapped in the vicinity. So you can kind of see at a glance what properties make them different than a Portneuf series. So I think soil series at first blush seem pretty simple, um, but there's actually a lot behind that name. Um, a lot of documentation and really extensive data collection goes into developing a soil series. 
If I go back to that search page, so this is where the OSD link is. Um, but right next to it, you can also check out the series extent map link. And so the red shows the general area where the soil has been mapped. You can see that this portent of soil covers a lot of area between Twin Falls and Pocatello. Um, and a fun fact, actually, Portneuf is the second most extensive soil series in Idaho by acres covered. So if you live in this part of the world, it's highly likely you might encounter it. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what a soil series is and the kind of information you can seek out about them. Um, over time, you'll start to build familiarity with different soils in your area, but Especially at first, I think it can be overwhelming as part of inventorying resources for conservation planners or other types of work. So I think it's especially helpful when you're starting out um, and working with soils data, just take a step back and look at soils in a more general or high level perspective. Um, so for the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna share with you some neat um, educational resources focused on soils in Idaho. Um, and I think these are really great tools just to build that familiarity with soils in new places. So we're going to start with this um, Explore Idaho Soils webpage. Let me share that link with you. Um, so this is an ArcGIS story map, which is just kind of an interactive web page with maps and photos, et cetera. Um, this was made by Sean and Shauna on the Idaho NRCS Soils team. And it's public facing, so anyone can access this. It's actually really easy to find just by Googling the name Explore Idaho Soils as well. Um, so really at the top, let me start scrolling down. Um, it starts with reviewing some soil 101 topics like formation factors, uh, which helps explain soil diversity in a small area. You know, why is a soil right here different from a soil down the road? Well, one of these five soil forming factors is slightly different. Um, soil functions, soil health. It's a nice gateway to other links and resources too. You can see that here's a link to the NRCS Idaho Soil Health homepage. So this is an overview map of soils featured in the Idaho Soils Atlas. And that's a publication from the U of I from 1983 that showcases diverse soils across most of the state. Um, so this publication is excellent, but it's now out of print, so paper copies are really hard to find. Um, so this story map contains that content digitally. So one of the best parts about this um, is that it features just really great um, landform and soil profile photos. So all the soils featured on this map are listed in alphabetical order below. And this section, uh, it, it includes more details in particularly or in particular discussion about prominent characteristics um, and geological processes or events that led to the formation of that soil. Oh, I'm going to go down to the Gooding series. Here it is. Um, we can take a closer look at this one. So here's that taxonomic classification again. This is actually a link that takes you to the OSD. Um, this soil is mapped throughout southern Idaho on relatively flat or gently sloping basalt plains as shown in this landform photo. And then each of the featured soils has a soil profile photo to about a two meter depth. And these are really beautiful. Um, it's really easy to see color changes too down the profile indicating different soil horizons. Um, this one, you can see little white flecks 
showing the calcium carbonate content increasing towards the bottom of that soil profile. And then below, we have prominent characteristics, and it explains different parent materials that comprise this soil. So, including recent alluvium or river deposited material, some lusts or wind deposited silts and very fine sands over the salt bedrock that is really slowly weathering in place at the bottom of that profile. Again, there's a link to check out the series extent and see where this has been mapped. So I think this resource is a really good introduction to Idaho soils and it helps with understanding soil properties on a larger scale. All right, I'm going to jump over to another story map. This one is also searchable via Google. It pops right up. Um, the maps on here and the story map webpage were made by Shauna Bernal Fields. It's one of our more recently created resources. Um, it does a really good job explaining what is a soil series. How does it fit into soil taxonomy? So a good place to learn more about soil taxonomy if you're really interested. Another uh, link to view OSDs. Again, those that's a document that describes um, kind of the poster child of the soil series, the best example or central to the concept of the soil. And then these maps, show the top 10 series by acreage or extent, starting with Boulder Creek as the number one most extensive series in Idaho. And for each one, it's broken down by land cover. You can see the legend here. Um, in this case, the majority is definitely forest land in dark green. Um, you'll also notice the purple star over here um, that indicates the Boulder Creek type location. So that specific site represents the central concept of the soil um, described on the OSD. So we know that the soil series have a range in characteristics and in places it might be on the outer edge of that range and not match up closely with the horizon descriptions as written on the OSD. But if one was to dig right here uh, in the vicinity of a type location, it should closely match the horizon information on the OSD, you know, from uh, depths to rock content, etc. Um, so every soil series has a type location. It's part of the process for establishing a new soil series. Um, and that type location shows kind of where that new series was first established. If we click to the right, we can see um, more of these extensive soils. Here's that port enough again. Uh, in number two. Um, so this is just really good information when you're learning about the soil and trying to understand what the concept of it is and where you might expect to see it. I'll check that one out. Um, before I scroll down further, if you can see this question on the screen, do you know how many different soil series there are in Idaho? Um, if you'd like, go ahead and enter a guess into the chat. Any brave souls out there want to take a guess? Or if you have this page open, you get an easy answer. 5,000. That's a lofty guess, but the answer is actually 1,800. So over 1,800 series are mapped across the state currently, with large areas of central Idaho still being actively surveyed. So we do expect that number to increase. <laughs> um, so that's why these maps were created, um, showing the most extensive soils across the state um, to make it easier to learn some of those key series, because there are so many series. Um, scrolling down, so this map here, it's the same 10 series 
they're just displayed spatially um, with diagnostic horizons and key features of the soil summarized. So if we see for Boulder Creek some of those diagnostic features, um, the climate, soil temperature and moisture regimes, parent material, and the depth class. And if you keep scrolling down, it will go through each of those 10 most extensive uh, series. Uh, what's really nice here too is that at the bottom of this page, we have a key. It explains uh, the depth classes and it has a glossary for terms such as, you know, what's an argillic horizon? Um, you can figure that out here. Um, and finally, there is this link to the illustrated guide to taxonomy. That's a visual guide for more um, details about soil tax taxonomy. It goes into great depth um, and soil terms if you're interested. So I definitely recommend bookmarking this story map um, just with all those quick links to search for OSDs for any series, um, the glossary of terms. Um, I'd also recommend bookmarking this if you do education and outreach with different audiences um, about natural resources and want to represent Idaho soils. I think this is a good one to share. So the last page that I'm going to share uh, is an ArcGIS web map app that was put together by the soils and GIS team. this load for a second. And a side note on this one, currently it is only accessible to people within NRCS. Um, at some point, we might be able to make this public facing, but um, for the time being, it is only within the agency. Um, what this map is showing is all of the series type locations across the state. Um, so of the over 1,800 soil series mapped within Idaho, over 1,500 of them have a type location within the state, um, and that's what these blue points are showing. Um, so you can see the density of them across the state. You know, there's lots kind of clustered here around Emmett, um, where many new series seem to be established. Um, and it's pretty easy to see areas where not a lot of mapping has occurred yet. Um, so this is a great reference for locating type locations because even though it's listed on every series OSD, the units it's reported in vary depending on the vintage of the OSD. You know, it could be coordinates um, in a different format or with a different uh, datum, or maybe there aren't coordinates at all, just a uh, PLSS with feet from a given corner of the section or a landmark, just like we saw in that Portneuf OSD. Um, you could definitely still figure out the type location. It's just going to require some extra work of, you know, firing up ArcGIS Pro and pulling in some layers. Um, so instead, I went through and determined WGS84 decimal degree coordinates for every series type location in Idaho. And they're displayed here on this um, ArcGIS online web map. So it's really easy to view and search for them spatially. Um, eventually, the OSD documents for soil series should be updated with the decimal degree coordinates as well. But if you zoom in, um, you'll see labels pop up for the different series names, um, as well as PLSS sections on the map. And if you get even closer, you'll see soil map units up here. So you can use this layer in a couple of different ways. For one, um, you can search for type locations in your region. You now just um, type it in here in the upper left or zoom in to your duty location or region and see what soil series were established in your backyard um, as the central concept. When you get close, you can click that little blue point. Uh, and get a pop up. 
Um, and there's a link in the pop-up that goes straight to the OSD as well. And a second way you could use this uh, resource is to use the search bar up here and enter a soil series name and see where the type location is for a particular series. So I was going to search for the series Tindahe as an example. Um, so we see a, this option here in the drop down, and it takes us straight to the Tindahe type location. If we were to use that link for series extent and see the extent for Tindahe, um, we'd see that it is found across a large part of southern Idaho. However, the type location right here is just north of Pocatello. So you can get closely acquainted with just a handful of soils that were established really close to where you live and work. You know, what are some key features of those soils? Look at depths to diagnostic horizons, um, horizons with a clay increase or carbonate increase, rock content throughout, depth class, typical surface textures, um, et cetera. So I think it could be a good tool for new conservation planners to build some familiarity with important soils in your vicinity just by picking a handful and getting to know them. And then when you're pulling up, soil maps on web soil survey with a whole bunch of different map units. Um, they'll already be acquainted with many of them. Um, and you can also just see what kind of soil data is available in your region. Um, I also want to point out that on this map, you might have seen some earlier, some little purple dots. See if I can find a spot with some that pop up. Okay, here we go. So sprinkled throughout this map, there are also purple points, okay? So what these show um, are the locations of lab sampled pedons. This is a layer that was made by the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory, and I just included it in this map. Um, so these are soils that were collected and sent to a national lab for further characterization. And a very small percent of these series have this kind of thorough characterization data from the National Lab. Um, but you can use the search bar to find um, available data for any um, So I'm going to use the example of the soil series Stravel. So if I type that in, um, we see under series type locations, we get just one hit. Under KSSL lab sampled pedons, there are two points. I'm going to click that first one. Takes us right to the place. And this lab sample, sampled pedon is right next door to a struggle type location. Um, in the pop up, you can click the link next to primary lab report. And this report shows really the nuts and bolts, really detailed information used to classify the soil in the taxonomic system and you know, further understand its properties uh, or potential limitations or beneficial qualities for a project. Um, so this is one way to access a lot of detail for some soils. You know, you can look at clay content, um, organic carbon content, Maybe pH or carbonates are relevant to your specific conservation project. Um, in the case of this series, um, the SAR over here is very high. Um, this means that there are a lot of sodium cations in the soil. It stands for sodium absorption ratio. Um, and this causes soil particle dispersion. So the soil lacks structure and it turns into this really unstable mess if water is applied and it's really hard on building foundations. So that's information that you can determine from these reports. Um, but these lab reports are extremely dense. There's tons of data. There are these little codes squeezed in here too that indicate specific tests that were run. Um, 
So I just want you to know that these are available and you can find them. Um, but NRCS soil staff are really happy to help with translating these for you. So definitely reach out if you do have any questions. And those are the resources that I had planned to share with you today. And we have plenty of time left over if anyone has questions. So feel free to type those in the chat or just speak up. Definitely feel free to reach out later uh, with questions too. But hopefully this was useful information or at least piqued your interest in soils in some way. Um, thank you so much for listening in and hope you have a good rest of your Tuesday. Hey, right. Tasha. Hi. Nice job, Go. Tasha. And, you know, stick around for a minute too, because sometimes a few people drop off and then you get a question or two. Yes, awesome. we were just trying to find how our, our unmute button, so don't oh, leave gotcha. yet. Um, yeah, um, I, we are curious if the lab measured soil inorganic carbon. Should be an okay. indication on calcium carbonates in there, on carbonates. Yeah. In that report, if you look at it. So, yes. Usually, some of them will have a total carbon recorded. Okay. Um, and the difference uh, between that and organic carbon would be your inorganic. So some of them do include that information. Great. And I think Thank you. Stravel is some of those layers on Stravel are up to 25% calcium carbonate. If I remember this soil, I had dealt with this thing not too long ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we will definitely be in touch. And um, that was just a fantastic presentation. Is this um, video going to be available by any chance? I'd love to use it in my class. Oh, awesome. Yes, we did record it and it will be accessible on the YouTube channel for NRCS Idaho. Awesome. Uh, and also, um, when do you think that GIS layer might be available to the public? Um, I will get in touch with you. Okay. We can talk about that for sure. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's you. These resources are fantastic. So, yeah, nice job. Thank you. Any other questions out there? Hey, Tasha, was there anything that you, you covered that you kind of wished you'd had allotted more time on? Um, well, we could always take longer to kind of go over some of the specific series. I feel like we, we kind of glossed over those. There's so much information packed into each individual series, but I guess I kind of, I'm leaving it up to you all to investigate what uh, you find specifically interesting or what's, uh, what's nearest you. Um, but is, if there's anything I could cover in more detail that you guys are interested in, I'd be happy to. Um, Tasha, I'm wondering if we'll get closer to my guest of of 5,000 um, once we get more <laughs> data, <laughs> once we get more um, mapping done for central Idaho. I guess what are what are your thoughts on that? And are, do you have any um, Proposals or funding to expand mapping into um, some of those more remote areas, or what do you think? So that's a really great question. Um, there are a couple people on the call who are actively involved in that mapping process. I am not directly involved with it, but um, a lot of progress is like being made um, currently. And there is a 2026 deadline to have the entirety of the U.S. mapped. And so by that deadline, we're expecting, you know, some data. A lot of it's being done through uh, digital mapping techniques, and it'll be refined over time. Um, but yeah, if, if there are any other people involved in that mapping process on this call who want to comment, please go ahead too. 
And Carla says most of the those areas will not be correlated to series. So more likely a more general, a higher level taxonomic class. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and I just saw your comment, Jen. I will put my email in the chat if you want to reach out later. I see Kian put a a link in there too for the soil property sub team. Thank you. That's awesome. Great, thank you. I will check that out. I think we're I think we're 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 running the uh, the awkward silence uh, I know. deal uh, <laughs> pretty good. I think we've we're reached that stage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, we'll wrap this up. Thank you again okay, for I'll, everyone I'll, for being here. I'll finish the recording here. Okay. Thank you.